what I want to do is make this a somewhat basic presentation. Ride with GPS is a very sophisticated system. I've been with these guys a long time. I swear the first time I talked to this guy, he was running this thing in his garage. And it's turned into a big international business. Um, and we could spend a lot of time, we could spend hours and hours and hours talking about all of these technically sophisticated things. And these guys are adding features to this thing faster than I can digest them. But I don't really want to do that. And if there's anybody who really wants to get into the weeds on some super cool technical feature, catch me after class and we'll, we'll talk about that. But for you all, I really want to make sure that everybody's got a basic understanding of the core fundamentals of what Ride with GPS could do for you and how you might use it. And it really is two different things. It's all software, but it's two different types of software. One is it's a web-based system that fundamentally is, you know, it does so much, but fundamentally, don't get lost, it is for finding routes and creating routes. Finding routes, a route being some course you want to ride, or creating a course that you want to ride. The other piece of software is a mobile app, and that's you know only come around in the last, I don't know, 10 years or so. Um, and we're going to talk about those two things separately, but we're going to start with the web-based system, ridewithgps.com, talk about some of the basic things that you can do with that, and then we'll move on and talk about what you can do with the app. And uh, we want to make this interactive, so feel free to stop me along the way. I, I, don't, I definitely don't want to lose anybody. So if I'm getting too technical or going too fast, stop me, and, and we'll back up a bit. And don't worry about whether you're asking a question that's too technical. If I think it's too technical for, for this presentation and for this audience, uh, I'll let you know and we'll talk about it offline. And there was an outline that I sent out on the club email list. If you haven't seen this, it's probably in your inbox somewhere and I'm happy to share it, to you, share it with you again. It's worth having this afterwards. It's great if you have it with you, but it, you, and you can pull it up on your phone or your iPad or whatever. But it's also good to have it afterwards because all the links in it are live. So you can click on any of the links and it'll take you right to that page if you happen to be looking at it on your computer. And that's kind of how I'm going to do my presentation. I don't have any slides. I just have this same outline that you guys have. So the first thing you need to know about Ride with GPS is you can do an awful lot without a paid subscription. But ultimately, these guys have got to make money and they've got a big team of people now that they're supporting. Um, so they do that by offering some subscription options. You, again, you could do a lot with the basics, but uh, I think if you end up using it a lot, you're probably going to want one of the subscription options. And um, what I, uh, some of my friends do who don't use it a lot, but they use it when they go on a trip, sometimes with Laura and I, is they just buy a one-month subscription, which is, I don't know, about $7, and they have the full run of it for a month. And then if they're not going on a bike tour again for another six months and they don't need it locally, they just don't get an annual subscription six months later they get another seven dollar a month subscription. So just to talk about the subscriptions for just a moment, and again there's a, you, you, you do want to do a login, so you want to have an account, otherwise you won't be able to save anything you create. But again, and having an account does not necessarily mean you have a paid account. Having an account is a precursor to having a paid account, but you can have an account without it being a prepaid account. In other words, you perhaps have not bought a subscription and that's fine. That's not what we want. That's what we want. So, subscriptions. And the subscriptions are really pretty easy because when you go to their subscription page, what they'll tell you is you get two options. Starter, which is free, or premium. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, they actually have one that they call basic. And you all have to let me know if you can't see that. I'm going to be looking, facing my screen here and I can make things bigger. Does that help a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Let me know, I can adjust any of that throughout the presentation. Good, yep. Um, so you can see the options here and you can scroll down and see the differences between all of these and you can study it. Um, but if you look over here, you can see that if you just have the starter subscription, there's quite a bit you can do. I will point out the reason that most of my friends have bought a subscription, either an annual subscription or a subscription for a particular trip is, um, turn-by-turn -turn voice navigation with our mobile app. How many of you guys you ever use either your phone or a GPS in your car to navigate? Well, this is exactly the same thing for your bicycle. Uh, and you don't get those spoken turn-by-turn -turn directions with the app 
unless you have uh, one of these paid subscriptions. Now, one thing that's a bit confusing about this, but I think is important for this audience, I'm presuming that, that the vast majority of you guys are club members. They're really, and I talked to the Ride with the GPS folks about this this week, I think there's an admission, and the admission is that there ought to be another column on here. There really is a fourth type of subscription, and it is a club subscription. And it's available to club members. And the way it works is, if you happen to be a member of a club that has purchased a club subscription, as a member of the club, you get a free subscription with some of these paid features. Very importantly, the turn-by-turn -turn navigation. You get that at no charge. However, does, it, our, club, does our club have that subscription? Does what club have it? Yeah, Capital City Cyclists absolutely does have it. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I can tell you because I've been with Hans's help, been playing with it, and I'm going to show it to you guys. But uh, what you want to do is go to the club homepage. Let me make that a little bit bigger. How's that? And then up here, I had to say, Hans, Hans, where was this? And he said, oh, yeah, it's under rides. Makes sense. He's got this link, ride with GPS. I assume you set this all up, Hans, right? And, uh, and it's great. What he does is he says, look, if you want to know more about a club account, and he has a link here to the ride with GPS help system, which, by the way, is superb. And if you're really geeky like me, I make my wife every night sit down and look at what's new on all my YouTube channels, and she just snores. But I subscribe to the Ride With GPS YouTube channel, so every night I look and see what new videos they've released, because they've got a video that'll tell you how to do everything. But at any rate, Hans has got a very nice link here, and I'm just gonna click on it so you guys can see, that tells you all about the club member benefits. But you don't need to read that, because I'm gonna cover that in about two minutes for you, pretty much what you need to know. But here's the important thing. There's a link down here that says to access our club page, and it's very hard to find. I would challenge you guys, it, 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 having, people who have not come to this presentation, I would challenge them to go to the Ride With GPS website and see if they could actually find where they sign up as a CCC member for Ride With GPS. It's there, I found it without Hans, but it's hard to find. Hans has made it easy. You don't have to remember anything other than go to the CCC website, which I love, click on Ride With GPS, get to this page that Hans has set up, and here it is. This is the complete Capital City Cyclist Club page, and you notice I'm not on the Capital City Cyclist website anymore. I'm on Ride With GPS. So we have a website within Ride With GPS, and it's terrific. And <clears throat> the reason I know so much about this is ever since Hans let me loose on it, I've been playing with this route library, and I'm gonna show you tonight why this route library is important, but there are tons of routes here. Now here's the trick to the CCC subscription to Ride With GPS. There's really two, and I've covered one, but I'm gonna cover it again. Go sign up. So go to that page, click. What happens, Hans? Do you get an email that says, Jim Mann has said he wants to join? Do you have to hit approve? Yes, yes. Okay. So Hans is gonna be the gatekeeper, but if you're a CCC member, he'll let you in. Uh, does it apply to family members as well? And it does. So if you've got a family membership like Laura and I, I Laura doesn't even know this, but I think I logged in as her and got her a CCC Ride With GPS membership. Um, now, if you already have a paid membership, you don't necessarily need the club membership. You have all the features that are included. But if you don't have a paid membership, the CCC membership has really all the key features, but here's the thing. They only work when you're doing a CCC ride. Now this is where it gets very tricky, tricky, because my friend Ken Schilling, many of you guys know Ken, he leads lots of rides. He creates all these rides and ride with GPS. He doesn't know this, I wish Ken was here, and he, he, I hope I can actually get him to sit still long enough to listen to me teach him about this sometime. I'm not optimistic. But the problem is Ken is creating these routes and he's saving them in Ken's account. Well, if you, as a club member, go to ride a route that's in Ken's account, you're not gonna get the turn-by-turn -turn directions. That club membership only works for you. They were very smart in the way they did this, if you're riding a CCC route. So what I've been doing is taking Ken's routes and other routes and copying them into here. And here's a little trick for you. If we go back to the club website, um, 
And some of you guys may have heard that I'm fairly new to town, but I went to the CCC board and I said, oh, I think I, I got some ideas that some things I've seen that have worked some other places to beef up CCC's group rides. And they said, great, we want to beef up CCC's rides. You're hired, i.e. you got the volunteer job. And I, so I'm now the club's ride director and I've been driving everybody crazy, gathering information. My best assistant right here is Jim Mann, has been feeding me everything, including new rides. It's been great. But between Jim and I, we're starting to get these rides listed. And I think most of you all probably saw I sent out a link that said, hey, that's a pretty robust ride calendar given that CCC is just really getting restarted after COVID with group rides. But what I want you to see is if you pick, and I'll pick on my friend Ken Schilling, Ken's got a ride on here every Saturday. It's a recurring ride. And had you clicked on this about a week or so ago, you would have seen that I put the routes in here. There's two of them for tomorrow's ride. But had you clicked on them before, it would have said ride created by Ken Schilling. That's okay. I had a paid subscription. I was able to ride the ride. I've been riding it for months. But if all you have is a club subscription, no go. But if you click on it today, you'll notice the keywords here. Doesn't say Ken Schilling, doesn't say Hugh Aaron. I took Ken's ride, cleaned it up a little bit, put it in the CCC account by Capital City Cyclist. Anything that says by Capital City Cyclist, you're good to go with the club, free club membership. Questions? Something I'm not able to reconcile right now. I already have a ride. A right paid now. subscription or an account? No. Okay. A free one. Good. wonderful question. How does her free account know that she's linked? So here's the steps. You are going to send through Hans's link. You're going to have ride with GPS, send a link to Hans and you probably will probably have you sign in when it does that. So it knows who you are, right? Yeah, I just tried and it's making me sign in. Yes. So you're going to go to the web page that Hans has set up, right? It's yeah, going to yeah, yeah. it's going to take you to ride with GPS. Well, let me just show you. You're going to go to here, uh, and you're going to go under rides, and yeah, you're going to yeah, go yeah. to and I can't really demo it because I'm already in. Right. But you're going to go down here and you're going to click to access our club page. Now you just tried it, and it's going to say, is it Nancy? Nancy. Nancy. Oh, Nancy. Yeah, it's, it's going to take you, it's, it's not going to work for me because it already knows who I am. All it wants me to do is sign into club. Now, if you see sign into club, that means you've already got the Han seal of approval. But what you'll probably see is something that says, uh, I can't remember what it says, uh, request login or something like that. Do you remember what it says, Hans? Request to join. Yeah, request to join, right. You hit that. You're going to be signed in to Ride with GPS. Ride with GPS is really easy to sign in. It doesn't really even sign you out very frequently. So make sure you're signed in. You hit that link. Hans is going to approve you, and then you're good to go. And if you get to this page and it says nothing, you're in. If you get to this page and it says sign into club, as it's saying to me, I hit that, bam. It knew who I was. It remembered me, and I am now in the club account. Yes, okay. and there's all sorts of other things in here, but don't get lost in this. Again, it's so big. Focus on the basics. The route library is what you really care about. And okay. you can search these, and you can go download one of these routes onto your phone, download the free app. You don't even have to be out with Ken or Jim or any club ride leader. As long as you've got a CCC membership to ride with GPS and you're riding a route here, you can go ride it and you'll get the full benefit. Yes. What if I already have a paid membership? Right. That was my case. If you already have a paid membership, uh, I'm not sure you, you, whether you even need the club membership, but I would get one. How about if I wanted to switch? Oh, yeah, yeah I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I don't know. My, and you could, the ride with GPS uh, tech support people are fabulous. I mean, you hear back in hours, not days. Uh, you could send a you can send them a question. I have in my outline their email address. I I probably lately have been emailing them once a day because I'm working on a bunch of things and they're. Can you just cancel I, your? No, Dave. But uh, yeah, it may be. Uh, and then I don't know whether you have to re-request or not. I doubt it. 
I'm just guessing now, but my best guess is he can let his he can cancel or let his subscription expire, and I suspect he'll still have his club member. Because remember, he's not canceling his ride with GPS account. He's just canceling the paid subscription, and that would be fine. Yeah, everything I've said so far, you're going to want to be connected to the internet. Okay. Now, what about it, when you're riding with GPS? Right. And you go out of well, they've thought of that. These guys have thought about everything over the last 20 years. They have an option that you can download a route. So let's say you're going to someplace, <clears throat> somewhere that you think has spotty or no cell coverage, right? <clears throat> Before you go, you download the route. And if you don't know, it might be a good idea to download it. Well, when you download the route, not only does it download the actual route, it downloads the underlying maps. And the thing will work out there. With, you, you could turn your cellular connection off. OK. So the only thing I didn't cover on the first page is the help system. And let's just take a look at that. I'm going to get out of the CCC page because, yes, follow up question. Yes, so he, he's asking if you have downloaded the route and you have no cell coverage, is the system going to know, I think you may be asking, is the system going to know where you are so that it knows to give you the next spoken cue? And the answer is, I don't know much about Android, at least with the iPhone, the answer is an unequivocal yes, because in the iPhone, the GPS chip is separate from the cell reception chip. So you can use an iPhone as a GPS with no cell coverage. I suspect Android is the same. It'll be seamless. Yeah, because the same technology in the phone is receiving your GPS position regardless of whether or not you're connected to cellular. I believe that's true. But I can tell you what I know is true is it's all seamless. And if you wanted to, Laura and I are getting ready to do a big ride in Europe and if we wanted to, we could download, so far we've got 24 routes, we could download all 24 routes, it'd be no problem, and that way we'd have them just in case, although my experience has been that I almost never need that. There's probably out west in the United States would be the one place where I might want it, but I haven't found many places where I really needed to ever download the routes. Now, I want to make sure that you understand that it, it, the terminology gets a little confusing. If I was running a ride like that, I may not have everybody download them. What I might do is have everybody save them. And saving them is different than downloading them. Saving, and I'll get to this in a minute, saving them just puts the route in your account so you can use it. Downloading it literally takes all that data and puts it on your phone so it's all running <clears throat> locally on your phone, nothing is happening in the cloud. See the difference? So when, like, uh, when, when, the, when the Spaghetti 100 comes around, you guys might say to everybody, here's the route library, you know, save it, and I can help with that when the time comes. There's some ways to organize that to make it easy for people. Probably wouldn't tell anybody to download it because I have not yet found a place in Tallahassee where the cell coverage was so bad that I needed to have it downloaded. What's that? Sumatra. <laughs> well, maybe. Hans, did you have a comment? Okay, well, in that case, people may want to download it. But, you know, it's, I found it to be a little bit like streaming. You know how sometimes if you have a weak signal and it buffers, but riding with GPS is smart. It seems to, like, grab a bunch of stuff when it has some cell, and then if you've got 10 minutes with no cell, it keeps working, and then you get to some more cell and it grabs some more. So, hey, uh, your mileage may vary. I would say, if in doubt, download. All it's going to do is use up a little space on your phone. You can clear that space later. So... I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm signing out here. I'm supposed to be signing out of the club account, but I'm still in and I can tell because it still sees my picture. Now, the help system. I just want to make sure you guys know that it's there because uh, it is really terrific. Weird place to put it, but under the, under your sort of login icon, it's got the help system. And once you get into this massive help system, it, it's, they've spent a lot of time organizing this and writing it and it's quite good or just go to YouTube and look for a video. Now, next concept. I'm on the second page of the outline. Rides versus routes. Let me go back to my home page. 
I know this is a very busy page, but you'll see in the center of the home page, and you can organize this as you can imagine any way you want, it has today, uh, Leon County, nine hours ago, it says ride. Do you see that? Right below that, it has Tanya's tandem debut. Tanya is the name for my wife's new knee, and today was her first day back on the tandem, 10 weeks post-surgery. So last night, in honor of this event, I created a route and shared it with her called Tanya's Tandem Debut. It was only 12 miles, which was big for her, just getting back on the bike. And uh, we did that route. So that's the route. While I was riding, though, we were navigating. When you navigate, it records your ride and everything you'd ever want to know about the ride, including a bunch of stuff you don't care about. But every piece of data you can imagine. It is a very sophisticated bike computer. I, I haven't, we, we threw away our Garmin's years ago and for us have never looked back. It, we just use these as our ride computers. We already own them and, and, and they're full featured. Um, so here's a ride, here's a route. Those two things are different, but they look awfully similar and it can be very confusing. The big difference is that a route has a cue sheet in it. It has the turn by turn directions. When you record a ride, it doesn't record those, it just records where you went. And if you look very closely here, I love the way they've done this now, is you know, they've got it color coded ride route. Um, but also if you look right here, that little icon, that means there's a cue sheet. So you have to be careful. I'm about to talk about finding, going out and finding routes, because that's something that's you could do with Ride With GPS that you might really love. You're going on vacation. You're going to, I don't know, pick a place, Panama City. You want to go ride. Let's go see what rides people have created in Panama City. Well, make sure that when you start doing that search, because it'll show you lots of stuff, it may show you rides, what you really want are routes. And more than one person has gotten out there, they have taken a ride, they've saved it on their phone, their route to go, all of a sudden, no turn by turn directions. You can still kind of follow it, but you got to do it by looking at the map and so where you are. Forget that. You want it to say, turn right in 50 feet. Can you filter that to go through route? Uh, you can. And uh, if I forget in a minute, remind me to turn that feature on. Okay. So let's, we are now at finding routes created by others. So notice that we have a find option at the very top. It is, a, it is very important. It is a main menu option, find. Well, where do you want to find routes? It could literally be anywhere in the world. And we've used this in some crazy places and there seem to be routes there. Um, but let's say uh, uh, last summer, Laura and I went up and rode in uh, Northampton, Mass, which we absolutely loved for bicycling. I'll put in Northampton, Mass, and I want to start right downtown. So show me everything within two miles of Northampton. Uh, and now uh, here's what I'm doing, folks. I want to get ahead of you here. I'm, I realize I'm starting to. All rides and routes. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Or only my rides and routes? Well, I want to see all the rides and routes up in Northampton because I'm going there to visit. I'm going to be there for a couple of weeks. I want to go ride. What's, what's going on up in Northampton? I could put in some keywords if I wanted, like trail or whatever. Now, this will uh, find rides including 450 miles. We're not doing any 450 mile rides. Uh, my wife and I generally like about a 35 mile ride. And if it's a little bit shorter and we get to lunch sooner, we're okay with that. But we don't, we want to get some exercise. So we, you know, on a normal day, if it's, if it's, you know, we want it to be at least 25. So we got a pretty narrow, uh, repertoire. We want it to be between 25 and 30. Now, now that my wife has the new knee, I don't know how to answer this question, but I used to scroll way down. She didn't want to do 8,800 feet in her 35 miles. Now she, she told me to keep it under 6,000, I think. No. Now, Northampton's a little hilly, so you got to be adventurous here, but I'll say, give me, you know, give me everything that's 1,400 feet. That'll work. I don't know if y'all have been to Northampton, but there's a bunch of trails that converge there, so you can do it pretty flat. And surfaces. Well, I might want to be mostly paved surfaces, and I might like an out and back or a loop. Oftentimes, we like loop routes. And here's the question. Nancy, I think you may have asked this. It's, it says this in a weird way, you know, in Ride With GPS parlance, it ought to say, show only routes. It doesn't say that. It says, turn by turn routes. 
That means don't show me somebody's ride. Show me just a route with a turn-by-turn -turn direction. All right, then we hit search. Let's see what we got. Voila, it found us for 108 rides within two miles of downtown Northampton that met every one of our parameters. How do you like that? Super cool, and Laura and I, when we were there, rode with the Northampton Cycling Club, a little pro tip. I'm a big, I love bike clubs, um, and whenever we go to one of these places, we typically join the local bike club. You know, if I'm in Northampton and I see this is a club route, more likely than not, it's a good one, not some route that some crazy person created and, you know, might be ridiculously ridiculous. Uh, the bike club is going to create usually a reasonable route, right, on decent roads. So, I, I, you know, that's probably what I want. But I won't rule out uh, somebody else's, but I just might be careful about looking at it. Questions so far? I had a question. When, the, when you do the difference between ride and route, yeah. and you're creating your own, like when I hit record on it? You're creating a ride. A ride. When you yeah, are I'm riding a route, you are creating a ride. You are saving a ride in your account. You do. So we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. So right now, and, and we did, if we had put, if we look at this list, this 108 list, we ought to probably find something f created by Hugh Aaron on here because I don't, I'm pretty sure that we didn't ride just routes we found up there. I don't remember. But these guys are intentionally creating routes, right? They, they are intentionally creating routes, but... Do not assume that they are intentionally creating good routes. Yeah, right, 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 right. Uh, they could be not know what they're doing. Uh, they could be creating a route that doesn't make any sense for anybody but them because they're going to see the grandmother who lives on a terrible road to ride a bicycle, right? Um, but you get a sense of it. And again, that's my little trip. It's, uh, uh, trick for you. If it's Northampton Cycling Club, they're, they're not creating bad routes in all likelihood. No, I think you're going to get to my question Okay. you said you're going to talk about how routes and rides are created. Yes, that's next. Okay. So what we're doing here, just to give you the big picture, we're, we've got sort of three major components to this exercise tonight. Finding, we've hit the basics, finding, creating, and using. We are still on finding, but we're getting very close to creating. Question. Yes, and in fact, it's a very good question because um, everything I've shown you so far, you can do on the app as well. Okay. So like when we go to Europe, I don't bring my computer with me, no. but I bring my iPad and, and we have some places where we're staying five, six, seven days in Europe where we haven't bothered to create routes because we might wake up and say, oh, we want to do this, we want to do that. So while we're in Europe, almost certainly I'll be on my iPad. Could do it on my phone. I just like the iPad better because it's bigger. Uh, I, I might go find a route and say to Laura, hey, this is what I found. We'll look at it together. Say we like that. We'll, we will save it. I'm going to talk about this later. We technically won't. We'll pin it into our accounts, and then we'll go ride it. So you don't need the computer. As you might guess, the computer is better for everything I've shown you so far, right? These guys started this thing on the computer. Mobile was an afterthought. They're really focused on mobile. Mobile is really good, but mobile didn't start out to be a computer replacement. It started out to be a GPS. Okay, now, by the way, once you pick up one of these routes, we see that this was created by the Northampton Cycling Club. Interestingly, if we click on this, we can go to a page that they have, which may be interesting, but it does not look like it's their club account. And I, I may not be a member of the Northampton Cycling Club. Um, but we see information about it uh, that may be helpful. Almost all of it's paved, 99%. In reality, probably 100%. This concept of the, of the computer knowing which roads are paved and non-paved, I mean, that blows me away that that's even possible. It's not 100% reliable, uh, but it's pretty good. And then you've got the, the complete cue sheet. And, oh, the first question Laura's going to ask me when I tell her about this route, she's going to say, all right, how many feet of climb is it? Well, I'm going to say... Uh, it is 1,013 feet of climb, and then she's actually way ahead of me now. She's going to put it on her phone. She did this today, 
and we're, we're riding down, um, what was that road today at the beginning of our route? I can't remember. It's one you and I rode the other day. And, and she says, oh, yeah, the hills are at the beginning, White House. She said, yeah, the hills are at the beginning. She knew that because she, when she looked at the route, the first thing she did was look at the elevation curve, right? So this tells you an awful lot of information to, to know whether this is a ride that you might li- a route that you might like, right? Yes. Well, it, it does in that it will show you if it is unpaved. It will show you unpaved segments. And so much of this route is paved. I'm just looking like the St. Mark's Trail. Yes. So the rail trail is paved. Yes. It's not will, it, will it differentiate that as a off-road ride? Is that, is that the question? The answer is... Less traffic, not a lot of traffic, like isolated off-road. roads. Yeah, that's a... That's a that's a very interesting question with a, a sort of a long answer. The short answer is yes, I'm going to show you tonight how to figure that out. But you're going to have to pay attention. It's not as obvious as you would like. It would be really nice if they color coded it and said, hey, if it's blue, it's off road. Yeah, right. It's not quite that easy, but there is a way to do it. Right. Okay. Multiple ways to do it. Okay. And I have to do that because when we're planning our rides, we often go ride places, in Europe in particular, where we've never been before. Yeah. And, you know, I've got a whole two months of rides coming up, mostly, not always, but mostly places we haven't been before. And if we have been, I don't remember them. Right. So I have to figure all that stuff out. Of course, it's a little bit easier in the Netherlands because sure. we, we've sort of decided in the Netherlands you could just say, start at point A, go to point B, let the computer route you, and you'll love the route. Right. Yeah. Don't, do not try that in Tallahassee. No or anywhere in the United States. Tallahassee might be better than a lot of places. Okay, so we found one that we like. We're up in Northampton. We're ready to go out for a ride. What do we do? Well, the easiest thing to do is to pin it. See the little button that says pin? That means make a little entry in your account that will get you to this ride. And then when you pull up your phone, you're gonna have, you're gonna log in, just like you do on the computer, you're going to have, and I'm going to show you all this in a little while, you're going to have a uh, library. The library is going to have a bunch of things in it. It's going to have rides in it. It's going to have saved routes in it. It's going to have pinned routes. And we'll typically, like Laura today, I don't think we saved it. I think we pinned it, didn't we? You could, she could have saved it in her library and had it for next time, but she didn't really need it. Frankly, the only reason you'd probably do that is if you think you may want to edit it. But she's, I don't think, going to change my route. She's just going to tell me to do it if she doesn't like the route. So she just pins it, and then she can ride it. All she wants to do, jump in here at any point, sweetie. All she wants to do is ride it. She wants, and, and it has to be the minimum number of buttons with her on the bike, and it's telling her where to turn. If it's, if it's five buttons, she's not going to be happy. Right, Laura? Yeah. <laughs> we had that this morning. There's a little, little bug in that she rides with landscape mode. And it, it, there's a bug in landscape mode. And last year, a year ago, we wrote them a complete essay about it with photos telling them how to fix it. And so far, they haven't fixed it. I'm a little disappointed. But we make it work. So we could copy this to your route. And, it, and it, if you're me and you're up in Northampton, you may want to copy it because, again, I don't trust anybody. I probably trust the bike club. I'm going to review this route and tweak it. And I can tell you guys, I've been adding routes to the CCC library. I don't know how all the others got there. Did you put them in there? I mean, there was hundreds before I got to it. Yeah, mostly. mostly you? And some yeah, yeah. Well, my buddy Ken in particular, uh, I don't just copy his routes. If Ken has a route, I save it, I pick it up, I fix it, and then I save it. Because if you, anybody's ridden Ride with GPS with Ken's routes, you're going to be going down some interesting streets that Ken didn't intend for you to go down, but that's just how the route got created, and he wasn't bothered. He goes bam, 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 route done, save. So I pull them up and check them, especially with Laura. My wife does not like me to make wrong turns. I do enough of that already. She doesn't want to go down a street and have to turn around. So I check the route before I go. All right. Uh, Anybody here? Yes. Okay. The time is telling you, uh, I didn't get it. If you said, Good. 
stop me. Let me make sure you get it. The difference between sinning and saying yes. or when you would want to do it. Good. Let's review. Okay. Pin saves a pointer in your library so that you can navigate that route from your phone. Like a link. A link, if you will. That would be a good way to say it. Better than the way I said it, actually. A link. If you save the route, it actually copies the entire route into your library. What's the practical difference? The practical difference is that saved routes can be edited. I think it's true that a pinned route has to be saved before it can be edited. Ultimately, I suspect these guys will <clears throat> eliminate that distinction, but it exists now. Bottom line for you, though, is if you want to go out and ride a route, you can save it or you can pin it either way. You just have to know on your phone, it puts them in two different places. So, and sometimes that happens to me. I have to say, did I pin that or did I save that? And I have to look in two different places to find it. Does that help? Lee, am I repeating the questions enough? I yeah, you're doing good. Okay, stop me if I'm not. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And, and a big thanks to Lee for recording this. Isn't this really nice? I mean, look at this equipment. I'm going to have to start a YouTube channel. Now, <clears throat> my friend Jim Mann, he likes paper. I know that because I attended his presentation. Have I got some paper for Jim? Print, map, and QPDF. See that? I hit that button. We're going to Northampton. I'm going to hit submit. It's thinking. It's doing a lot of work here. It's thinking, 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 thinking. It's processing this route. It is creating a paper cue sheet with embedded maps in it. I don't know if I've ever seen one take this long. Ah, there it goes. Now we've got it. And actually, I sent one of these to Jim this week because I was helping him with some routes and he sent it to him as a, as a way to review his route. And it worked well for that purpose. There it is. It's, it yeah, it's downloaded to my computer now. So there's the overview. You know, I mean, it's really quite a nice job. That's the overview with the elevation plot. And then turn-by-turn turn directions and turn-by-turn turn maps for the whole route. Is that not the, the prettiest cue sheet you've ever seen? And it's the old style, right? I don't know if anybody else in here was used to ride back in the days of paper cue sheets where you folded them and we all had our paper cue sheet holders, right? This thing is designed exactly for that. This is the modern day version of 30-year-old technology. Yes, Lee. You can. Uh, of course, on, on the Mac, it just puts everything automatically in the downloads folder. So once I have it pulled up, I, it's just a PDF file. I can save it anywhere I want. Some people get lost about where it went. Yeah. Ah, hopefully not on a Mac. Well, on a PC? Ah, no warranties on PC. <laughs> yeah, but if somebody really gets stuck on that, I'll help you figure it out. Okay. <laughs> That really covers the fundamentals of finding routes. Any questions? Did I lose anybody else? Speak up if I do. Creating routes, the fun stuff. So once again, uh, I'm so appreciative of Jim Mann because I'm trying to add routes to the club route library and I know there's all these rides going on around town that aren't in the club library and I'm asking people and they're, unfortunately the culture shifted I guess you know, way before I got here during the pandemic to just doing your own thing. And now we've got this mentality of not making it a club ride. And uh, of course, I'm just a big fan of club rides. So I'm trying to get everybody to bring them into club rides. So far, one person has said yes. Not only has he helped me with a bunch of other people's rides, but he actually sent me a brand new ride that as far as I know, at least from what I can tell, has never been on the club website, and it looks like a great ride. And when I tell people about it, they say, oh, yeah, that's a great ride. Lauren, I'm going to come out and ride it with you one day. Hmm, that would be one we could think about for Sunday. And it's a Sunday Westlake ride. But what Jim sent me, and you guys have this, because I put it in my outline, this is literally copied from an email from Jim, in which he does a very good job of stepping me through, in the old days, a route. This is how we used to create cue sheets, right? 
And so I thought, well, what the heck? What could be a better exercise for this class for us all to go create for Jim a ride with GPS cue sheet, right? And then print it. Now he's going to load it on his iPhone. We're going we're gonna to bring him around. Right, Jim? <laughs> Would you say good luck? <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's a good, he doesn't mind me picking on him. He's a good sport. Okay, so what do we want to do? Well, we can just, if ever you hit the little ride with GPS icon, it'll take you back to your dashboard. And I do that a lot. In case you get lost, just take me right back. But up at the top, it says route planner, right? This brings up the route planner and it actually defaults, it's so smart, it defaults to my neighborhood, assuming that I want to ride from the house. But we don't want to ride from my house. We want to ride from what Jim called the Miccosukee Schoolhouse, which has, I've learned, lots of different names, Boys and Girls Club, yada, yada, yada. It sometimes it amazes me and I can't type or spell. I'll put some ridiculous thing in here and ride with GPS will know where, where it is. I don't know how it does it. But, here we're going to put in the actual street address, 15011-C-R-O-M-A-R-T-I-E. And well, I'm not going to put in Tallahassee Road, zip code, anything else. I'm going to see if it finds it. Did I hit go? Uh-oh. It didn't. It does not like it. I think so. Ah. It's, it's not going to be as smart as I thought it was. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Right. Not as good as I made it out to be. All right, that look right, Jim? That's our start. Now, there's a bunch of things here. I'm going to hit yes, start route here. It puts a little green start icon. Keep your eye on that. But there is some great stuff here. This is the best part of the presentation. This is your how do we create one. Now, first thing that we got to do is a few things we got to go through here. First thing is we've got to decide what map system we want to use. Ride with GPS calls these map styles. They have their own proprietary map style called RWGPS cycle. So that's their, let's call it their default map. In the United States, it's quite good. Um, it's not exactly Google, but it's pretty similar. When you hit the little drop down, you see the next option, at the, or not the next option, but the first option at the top of the list is map, right? So you all watch that screen as I hit map, and I want you to see if it shifts any. It changed a little bit. Does that look familiar to anybody? That is the Google map. And uh, in the US in particular, I use this quite a bit. One of you guys asked the question about how do we tell a trail? OK, Meg. All right. My, one of my better answers to that question is Google has been collecting that data for years. For such a successful company, they've done a terrible job of making it user friendly. You have to scratch your head and say, well, what is that? But let me show it to you. And when you select map, a new option appeared, bike paths. See that? Now, if I go back to ride with GPS cycle, see it goes away. I don't have the bike path option. If I go back to map, I have the bike path option. I got to turn it on. When I click now, the, now you will all know if you've ever been out here, and I've ridden a bunch of times from here, there's no bike path here. But, um, and, it's, and it really they shouldn't say bike path. They should say bike facility because this thing tells you if there is a, uh, in Google's view, a bike friendly road. It will tell you if there is a bike lane. It will tell you if there is a path. So if we were to take this and go not start here, but go start at the St. Mark's Trail because of its location, or if we were to start right here at Bicycle House, and, and we'll look at this before the night's out. You guys remind me, but I don't want to take us off of where we are. We would see right here, we would see all sorts of bike facilities in this area. And I would use that to create a route. For example, if Google is telling me, if I'm in a city, if I'm, if I'm in you know, a fairly good sized city and I want to ride around the city and Google says, this is a bike friendly road, that's the information I'm going to pay attention to. It's not the only thing I'm going to pay attention to, but it's information I want to know. So I actually switch back and forth 
these different map styles to get different things. I would recommend to you that consider starting your career with Ride With GPS, just using the default Ride With GPS map uh, and experiment some with the Google map, compare those two, see what you like in the United States. Outside of the United States, I almost always use the OSM cycle map. How many of you all are familiar with that? How about the OSM system at all? Very cool. Open source maps. This is a global initiative of volunteers, and I've, I've thought about volunteering for this, but my wife will kill me if I volunteer for one more thing. See her shaking her head back there? Um, these are people around the world who maintain these maps. It's like open source software, and it is so cool and so well done. You would think, oh, it'd be garbage. It's great. And, but, there's a lot more of them in Europe than there are here, so the open source maps in the United States aren't as good. In, <clears throat> in Europe, it's, it's our go-to map. And I, if I get a chance, I'll show you that. So help me remember two things I promised to show you. St. Mark's, different maps at St. Mark's Trailhead, and also let's go to Europe before we leave tonight and go look at the open source maps there. Um, because they're almost all you need to know to navigate, at least in, in Northern Europe, particularly in the Netherlands. They're great. Uh, and they have, they categorize roads. Is this a national, interna an international route in Europe, the Eurovelo system? Is it a Eurovelo route? Is this a regional map route? Is it a local route? You got all that. We actually have this in the U.S. There is a cycle route that runs through Tallahassee. Does anybody know what it is? So ah, but it's got a route name. You win, Hans. It is the U.S. 90 bike route. Yes. Um, so it, actually, if we were to go look, it, it, we could run into it on Jim's route, actually, because it's not too far. I, I come across it when I'm out riding from chairs. We may see it. Of course, we won't know we see it unless we switch to OSM cycle. So let's just take a peek. And there's multiple versions of this OSM data set. I use the OSM cycle version. It makes sense. I'm not sure why you would even use a non-cycle version. All right. We get... Pretty much nothing. <laughs> but it's pretty. Yes. All right, so let's go back to Ride with GPS. For Jim's route, there's not much Google has out there. There's not much OSM out there. We can, we can use the uh, Ride with GPS cycle map. I will tell you just a little technical thing. <clears throat> the route that you create is tied to the map style that you used. So if you create the map with OSM cycle, and then you go out and ride with Google, the two might not exactly match up, and that sometimes happens to me in Europe. It's not a big deal, but these maps don't perfectly align. And in some cases, the roads are 10 or 15 feet off, so you can be riding down something. You'd be riding in the middle of the, of the river. <laughs> and you can fix that if you're out there and it worries you. Just think, oh, well, what, what did I, if I'm in Europe, I say, oh, well, I know I used OSM cycle. I just, in it, you, those same map styles that I'm picking here, you can pick in your phone. So I just say, oh, let's switch to OM, OSM cycle and it puts me back on where I should be. Okay, so what Jim said was, oh, no, not quite ready yet. There's something else on this map that is probably my favorite feature, certainly in the United States, favorite ride with GPS feature. And it was one they didn't have initially, but they created some number of years ago, and it's heat maps. Heat maps. Heat map means they aggregate data. So I've got an ulterior motive. Other than beyond just educating you guys tonight, I want to have all of you all out there doing all of your rides with Ride with GPS turned on. Because all that data gets fed to Mother Ride with GPS and they create a heat map from it. So if a thousand people are all riding a ride, there's a pretty good chance that's a decent road to ride, right? If I look at a road and nobody's riding it, mm, there's probably a reason, right? It sometimes doesn't stop me and I usually live to regret it. Um, and it does this, there, and there are, let me back up, there's two versions of the heat map. There is the global heat map, which is what I just described. That's everybody that's riding. It colors the road red. The redder the road, the more people that are riding it. It's also personal heat map. And if you have no memory like me, personal heat map is great, especially in Europe, because we're, we're going back to the Netherlands 
the first month of our ride this year is in the Netherlands. I don't know how many rides have we done in the Netherlands, four or five, a bunch of them, but we don't know where we've been. So I'll keep that personal heat map turned on and I'll be able to say to Laura, oh, we've actually ridden this road before. Uh, that's the personal heat map. Uh, handy, but what's handier is the global heat map. And you'll see that's what I have turned on now, but let's just turn on personal heat map. Do you notice that it turned blue? Some of these roads turn blue? That means I've ridden them. And sometimes I'll be out riding, because we're fairly new to town, I'll be riding a road and somebody will say, have you been on this road before? And I'll, I won't remember and I'll turn on personal heat map and say, oh yeah, I have. Um, so, yes. That would be nice. Yes, wouldn't that be a terrific feature? In addition to pavement shading, they could do it, right? Because they've got the satellite data. That is a great idea. You should submit that. Now, Jim says, so we're going to keep on the global heat map and see if people are riding Jim's route. He says, turn right, on, oh, turn right at Highway 59 at traffic light. Well, Jim... I don't see a traffic light. What am I supposed to do here? Am I coming out on this road? Is this 59 right here? I don't think so. Okay, I'm going to the left. So I really should say left out of the park, right? So I'm going to click on the road. And when I did that, it drew a line. Now I want you to notice something. I think this may be where my friend Ken is going astray. I think he's clicking here in the intersection. Never click in the intersection. It confuses the system. Always click at a point where there are no decisions to be made, right? So I've just done a bad click, favorite button on any computer, undo, and I'm right back where I was. So far so good, Jim? Now, Jim, you're saying turn right at Highway 59 at traffic light. Now, is Veterans Memorial Road 59? Fantastic, okay. I'm gonna click right. So I just went just a little bit beyond the intersection and clicked. And it's building the route as I go and it's giving me the cues and the data. See, see this? Now that turn right is bizarre, isn't it? For some reason it's saying turn right in the middle of the road. It does make mistakes. Uh, now if I don't like that, I can just undo and go back. And what I really can do now that I know where Jim's taking me, I lost my start, so I'll hit my start again. I'll start like right here. And I can just go to really here. Now the cue sheet says left onto Cromarty? Yes, right. right on Veterans Memorial, CR 59. See that? Now I've got a clean cue sheet. Had it put in that strange, erroneous cue, I'm going to show you in a little while, if we were paying attention, we could have just gotten rid of that even after we'd done with our route. But if you pay attention as you go along, you'll have less cleanup at the end. Just kind of look and see what it does when you click. Okay, now, Jim didn't tell me how far to go, but fortunately I have him here, right on T.S. Green at bottom of hill. Now, seeing the bottom of the hill online, that could be tricky. We won't bother. We're just going to go till we see a road that says T.S. Green. And by the way, the heat maps are helping me here because if I look at this, I can see, well, more people went right than left. That's probably what Jim is doing, right? I mean, these... Half of these red, well, they wouldn't be, Jim, because you haven't turned your phone on while you were doing this ride, or have you? Oh, it doesn't have you in it. Okay. So these are all Ken Schilling and crowd. All right. Turn right there. All right. Still looks good, doesn't it? T.S. Green becomes Lake Road as you enter Jefferson County. Continue on Lake Road. All right. So we're continuing on Lake Road. And at some point, it's going to take a right on West Lake. So don't let me go too far, Jim. Is that West Lake there? Lake Road. Is this West Lake to turn right? Okay. We're clicking on it. Now let's mess up and click over here. It still worked. Now, do you notice that it just did something? It thinks that this road is unpaved. It's not, is it, Jim? My guess is, and you may be able to tell us, and others in here may be able to tell us, my guess is that road has not been paved forever. Nobody has told Ride With GPS that that road is paved, so it thinks it's unpaved. We don't care. And here's what I like. The map didn't tell us the name of the road. I had to ask Jim the name of the road. Now, if I had changed to Google at that point, 
And I might have had this question if I was sitting at home doing this and didn't have Jim here with me. Notice Google has the road name on there. It's a little hard to see, but it's there. That's kind of an example of where you might play with map styles. Let's keep on Google for a minute. But look, I've just turned the corner here, and let's say that I didn't have you local knowledge folks in the room, and I'm sitting in my office trying to create this route that Jim's given me, and it's saying unpaved road, and I'm thinking, Jim's not going to put us on unpaved road. Something's wrong. Well, you all recognize this little guy, don't you? Or is this a gal? Not sure who it is, but we drag him or her over to here, and we take a look at this road. Well, that looks like some sweet pavement to me. I use this a lot. So I use personal heat maps a lot, in, in Europe in particular. Uh, I, um, I used to, before I got more confident, I'm really confident about the Netherlands now, probably overly confident, but before I got more confident, she and I would go for an 800 mile ride. I would look at, before we left home, that, that route, I would have this little guy or gal show it to me every mile for 800 miles. Because I didn't want to put us, now, now we bought a bike with 55 millimeter tires and we don't care. Send us cobbles, we'll take them. But in the old days, we were riding a road bike, old days being up until last year, and we didn't want to be on some ridiculous road, which would happen a lot in Europe. Except the Germans. She knew I was going to say that. I don't know if you guys know this about the Germans, but the Germans are very, very protective of their privacy. I'm told that it actually goes back to sort of a cultural shift that happened with the Nazis getting per people's personal data, and the Germans are obsessive about it. So they went to Google and said, no street view in most of German. A few really progressive places like um, Hamburg has it, but a lot of Germany doesn't have it, and it frustrates the heck out of me. So for this ride that she and I are getting ready to do, half of it's in Netherlands, half of it's in Germany, I've said to Laura, I am much more confident. She always knows it's an adventure when she does this with me, but I'm much more, she's shaking her head, I'm much more confident about our Netherlands rides than our, our, our German rides, and we just both have to be ready to change course. No big deal. Okay, so you see how that street view is quite helpful, and in the U.S. it's great. Um, you just, you know, you guys all ride enough that you can, this tells you this, this is a road you're probably gonna like to ride on, right? Oh, because oh, of the hill? Well, we could look at the elevation chart, right? We're, we're only up to 285 feet, Hank. Jim has not killed us yet. Yeah. All right. What's the number there at the top there? That five? Wow. Ah, that is telling you that's mile five of your route. And that's an option that you can turn on and off. And I'm glad you asked because there's several of those options. Uh, they're under settings. And um, notice that I have turned on surfaces. I have turned on points of interest. Jim might say, let's say there was some school or a park that he knew was particularly good for a rest stop. He gave me this in Havana, some church that has a social hall that's good. I created what's called a point of interest. I don't know if you saw it on that cue sheet I did for you. And when somebody's riding along, their computer will literally say, turn left into the church social hall for a rest stop. And we could even say, oh, and they have ice and batteries. We could actually have the phone saying to this person, they have ice, I mean, ice, ice and water or ice and bathrooms. You can embed all of that stuff. So if I have points of interest, I want to see them. Distance markers, that's, I have that turned on. And then when we go to Europe, I might switch this to metric, but for now we're doing imperial. The only thing I really don't have turned on is queue icons, and I'll put that on there and show you what it looks like. I just find it to be clutter, but I know that the Ride with GPS experts, they like it. So it, it's basically just, you, at a glance, you can see every turn. That little box tells you a turn, right? And if you click on it, it tells you the turn that will be in the cue sheet. And by the way, you can add whatever you want to it here. It gives you a default cue for every turn. You can change it. Okay, let's continue on. Uh, we are going to continue on, Jim, and I'm going to sort of fly through this because it looks like to me, I don't even have to read your cue sheet. I'll bet you're staying on that road to at least here. Am I right, Jim? Keep going. Keep going. This side. Have I gone too far, Jim? All right, I'm going to undo. Am I turning right here? 
All right, I want you guys to see something. And again, I complained about Google, and it's really hard to see. I'm going to make this bigger. Can you see down here those little... Uh, yeah, that is the Google saying this is a good road for bicycles. And there is a legend to all that. I'd have to search around to find it. I have it saved somewhere. Yeah, right. And you may not agree with them. Okay, so let's keep going, Jim. How far are we going down on 90? All right, past 59? Sunray, got it. So we're going to turn right on Sunray? So I'm just going to click up on Sunway, and it did it, and you see it put in the queue, right? Now what, Jim, do I go to here? Oh, Left on Rococo Ro or not? Okay. All right, and now am I just going back to the, to the beginning of the ride? All right. And you can see there's only kind of one way that everybody does it. So in all likelihood, it'll probably route me back that way. So now I just click on kind of the end of the ride. You have to be careful not to click on exactly on your start. So click somewhere near it. And let's go back and double check. Look pretty good, huh? Okay, now we're almost done. Review cues. Let's double check this puppy. See it over here on the left? Review cues. I never leave home without it. Hit this button and it steps me through in detail the ride. So I hit confirm. Yeah, that looks okay for a start. All right, that next one looks okay. That looks okay. But sometimes if you click in the wrong place, it'll show you veering off and coming back. That looks okay. Ah, uh, this looks a little weird. Ah, I have a mistake. Do you see that? I guess when I was playing around showing you guys things, I overshot the route. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. Now, there's a bunch of ways to fix this, but what I usually do is just... Uh, return to route planner. This is probably not the most efficient way. I do this kind of the manual way. This is called a control point. Everybody see it? I pick that up and I move it back over here. I fix the route. It'll remember where I was in review. I hit review and I start over. Now it looks pretty good, right? Except it's telling me to make a U-turn. Ah, that isn't good, right? <laughs> see that straight? Make a U-turn in two-tenths of a mile. Now we can go up and look at that. Yeah, that's no good at all. So let's go back to Route Planner. And we've just got a holy mess right here, don't we? And you can see it's got us going up and down two sides of the road. Well, one thing we can do is get rid of the extraneous control points because they can cause problems. So I click on Control Point. We're venturing into an advanced topic here. I click on Control Point and I delete it. Then I'm going to click on this one and I delete it. That in and of itself won't fix the problem, but now I can grab this, pull it all clear of all that mess, and let's see if that fixed it. No, let's hit review cues, confirm, confirm, write, confirm, all fixed. So I just kind of cleared out my mess and I said to Google, don't worry about those bad control points I put in. That's a place where I clicked where I shouldn't have. Don't worry about those. I've just taken them out of the picture. Just redraw the route coming right through here, and it did it. So we're going to confirm. So you guys see what happened? I honestly didn't do that on purpose. I didn't realize I had done it. Um, and I did it because I'm you know, talking and typing at the same time. Yeah, totally sun exposed or pothole. You can write a book, and you can tell them, you know, make a U-turn, jog left, jog right, stay out of the middle of the road, anything you want. If you put in, say, a pothole. Yeah. It'll say it. They'll be riding along. It'll say, avoid pothole 50 feet. Um, you mark that as what's called add a Q and add a POI. And let's save that for the advanced class. But catch, anybody who's interested in that, catch me after class. I'll show you how to do it. I mean, it's, it's five seconds, but I, I don't want to run out of time to show you guys this. And I, I can't do anything on time ever, but I sort of committed to try to do this an hour and a half. Okay, confirm, confirm, confirm. I know my wife was dreading coming because she know I won't shut up till the last person leaves. All right, save this. Watch this. All right, Jim, what are we calling this? Are we calling this the uh, West Lake, right? And we could call it Jim Mann's West Lake Road Ride. West Lake Road Ride. 
but I don't want somebody who doesn't like it suing Jim for creating a bad route. So we'll just call it Westlake Road. And they'll, they'll never know he had anything to do with it because it'll look like Capital City Cyclists did it. Now, where am I going to save this? You guys would save it in your personal account. I'm going to save it in Capital City Cyclists account. That's a feature you will not have unless you pay money to Hans to get that special privilege. I don't know. Does anybody other than me and you have it? Is that right? Oh, does it allow every club member to save routes? I thought you made me a route moderator. Yeah. I assume not, but it might. Yeah. Yeah, there's such a thing as a route moderator, which somehow, I don't know how he did it, but I sent Hans an email and magically, 10 minutes later, I was a route moderator. Okay, now we have it. And anybody could find it. And if you have that free club account, you can now ride it with turn-by-turn -turn directions without sending ride with GPS any money at all. All right. So let's now turn to, we mostly covered everything. I'll mention something without spending any time on it because I just think it's cool. A feature called collections. This would be great. They have one called events and one called collections. They're very, very similar. The idea is that you take a bunch of routes and you, put, you organize them together in one spot. Events are tied to a date. Collections are not. They're just tied to whatever you want them to be tied to. So for Laura and I, I go back to, our, go back to my dashboard. Notice that I have collections, and I have a collection in here that says Europe 2023, and that's actually the Eurovelo flag. And this is all 24 of my routes organized, so every day when we start the ride, Laura and I can just go right to this and pick our route, and I have them organized by day. That's a collection. You don't have to use that, but uh, I find it, well, when you're doing this, we're, ride, we're out for 45 days. I think we have 24 days of rides, and we'll ride lots of other days, but... Uh, I would just get lost in all this, and this just lays them out for me, and it gives me this beautiful map. I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's showing me the start of the ride and the end of the ride, and each day's got a different color. And I could actually click on any one of those, and it would show it to me. The phone. And you see my screen here. On my home screen, I have the little Ride with GPS app. So the app itself is free, right? Everybody should download it if you're going to use, thinking about using it. Um, and I'm going to click on that app, and here we go. And it remembers where I left off today, and this was the saved ride um, that Laura and I did this morning. I'm going to click the left arrow and go back to the main screen. Oh, and now it's taking me back to the route. So it's a little confusing. It'll take you a while to get used to that. What we were looking at at first was a recorded ride. Now what we're looking at is the route that we rode. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, it's going to go wonky here because we are not out at the St. Mark's headwaters, which is where she and I started. But if we were, I would simply hit navigate. And it's giving me my first cue. Oh, but it says I'm off course. Now watch this feature. This is crazy. You see it says tap to route back to course. In theory, it's now going to step me from here with no human intervention whatsoever. It's going to snap, step me back to the St. Waters, St. Mark's Headwaters Greenway. Who here is ready to go ride this route sight unseen? <laughs> it would be interesting, right? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we think this is a great place to ride. I, I'd probably ride it, but that's what we get. So you see how it works. It looks like a GPS, right, uh, that you might have in your car. Uh, I just made the little cues smaller because it's got a big off course. That, can be, that feature, though, that can be handy because, like, Laura and I, we'll get off a ride when we get hungry. We'll ride into some little town. Well, I'm not riding my route anymore because I don't build in a lunch stop. We, that's something we just, you know, we go to lunch when we feel like it. And then we're finishing lunch and I'm, you know, feeling really lazy. I don't have to think about anything. Tap back, takes me right back to where, to the route. Um, you see that I have the map here and you will see that I have, um, it's showing the route. Uh, and it's showing us, the little blue dot. Uh, and it's showing personal heat map from when I last rode here. And it's got all this red everywhere, right? 
That's all, because everybody's riding bicycles around here. I mean, is there a place with more bicycle riding in Tallahassee than Bicycle House? I'd be surprised. And 95% uh, of that red is Scott. <laughs> They're going to need a new color for this. I mean, it's glowing red, right? So there you have it. Now, down at the bottom, I have my bike computer. And any one of these fields can be anything I want it to be. Uh, and there are multiple screens. So I go over here and I say, well, what's our elevation here? Somebody, we, I did a ride with a friend down to the lighthouse this week and he said, what's the elevation here? And I said, oh, it says we're 16 feet. That seemed about right. So it just gives you all the data you could possibly want, which is why she and I just, we used our garments till they died and we couldn't resurrect them and we buried them at sea and moved on. Uh, I, I mean, for me, I get everything I would need here. I realize that if you're, you know, a hardcore racer and you're doing segments and stuff like that that I don't do, you may still want the Garmin. Um, and you might say, well, the Garmin does all these cool things that Ride With GPS doesn't. Well, Ride With GPS doesn't want to get Garmin to get ahead of them. So, you know that bike radar? Does anybody ride with that? Yeah. Vario or whatever? Yeah. That even interfaces with Ride With GPS. So, you can get the radar screen right on Ride With GPS. So it, it, there, there are interfaces to everything. I have that in the outline. It'll give you the links to them. You can sync this with your Garmin. You can sync this with your Wahoo. You can connect it to st stuff. I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Connect it to stuff I've never even heard of. And I know a lot of people do connect this to Strava. Okay, so if I, you see how I navigate it, right? Now, let's say that we want to go ride Jim Mann's ride. Now, we've saved that route in the CCC library, haven't we? So if I go to the home screen, you'll notice on my home screen, I have a button in the middle called clubs because I'm a member of about five clubs on Ride With GPS. So I hit clubs and we see Capital City Cyclists at the top of the list, right? And I click on that and there's 125 routes in here. Click on that, right? And look at the top of that list. Yes, and that all happened in the cloud, right? I never connected my phone to transfer anything back and forth. And I know it'll do all that with Strava and Garmin's and all that too. Somebody else will have to teach that class how to interface Strava uh, and Garmin's with Ride With GPS. Um, and there we go. So now we're out there at uh, the Boys and Girls Club or the school and we're ready to go, Jim. All we do is hit navigate. Now what I do is I know this thing, you guys that are racer types are going to look at this and cringe. You spent $2,000 on your bicycle to avoid this weight. But I put this on my bike, and, and they sell it with a lighter clamp, but this one's a quick release, so it's the one I brought today. Clamp this on my bars. I just keep it on there. I pop my phone in here, and this thing will lock, but it's so good I never have to lock it. I mean, you can hit the biggest bump in the world. Your phone's not coming out of this thing. And away I go. I hit navigate. Now, I have a little bag on my top tube on all my bikes, and I put this in it and I'll get you know like three days out of it. And I turn this on and I start the ride at 100% battery and I end the ride at 100% battery. So what is the Garmin doing though that this doesn't, it does do something this doesn't do? Well, first of all, with the Garmin, you wouldn't need the battery, right? Uh, also, the Garmin is better at dealing with rain and really bright sun. We have to deal with that in Europe. Now we try not to ride in the rain, but if we have to ride in the rain, we'll, uh, We'll do something. The biggest problem we've had, and it doesn't happen very often, is rain gets in the port, and, and then I'll be sitting at lunch with a little piece of tissue trying to get the water out of the port. Although I found if you keep the battery plugged in, the water doesn't tend to get in there. But the Garmin's clearly superior in that regard. Yeah, I'm not worried about it damaging my phone. I mostly worry about I can't charge it, because have you ever seen that message, water in the port? Yeah, and then it won't accept the charge for two hours. No. But remember, I'm riding along with it always at 100% charge. Yeah, you could. That may be something that we could think about. Yeah. That would be a great solution. I actually have a low tech solution. Oh. Yeah, right. My low tech solution is a baggie. And if I just stick a baggie over it, it's good enough. If it's riding that hard, we're going to find some place to not ride, right? Uh, this is just uh, Amazon 
El Cheapo bike mount. And if you want me to look it up afterwards in my Amazon account and show it to you, I can do that or I can pull it up on the screen. It's about 20 bucks. The things are rock solid. I have about 10 of them. I just keep one on every bike. I just pulled this one off of bike she's been riding because it had the quick release. How does that do with like mountain biking? Do you know about that? Yeah. You mean, does it stay in here? Yeah, because yeah, I have done one uh, mountain bike ride lately with it and it did stay in. But you know what? If you're worried about it, now it isn't coming out without a crowbar. Can I hold it? Sure. What's your phone? Is that What's, an iPhone? It's an old iPhone, yeah. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what uh, folks were showing as their waterproof cases. That would solve it too. Ah, right, yes. I've seen that. That's a very cool mount. And it weighs much less than this. Yeah, you know why I don't have that? Because I don't think it'll work with my magnetic charger. So every night I pop my phone in a magnetic charger, bam, and it charges. They do? Well, that would be great. I may go to them. So at any rate, now we just hit navigate. We're out navigating this map. And you see the little button down at the bottom? Well, when we're done, we hold that button down and we can either resume ride or finish ride. When we hit finish ride, I don't know what we have in here. Then we hit save. Now, if we want, we could just delete it, which is what I should normally do. But I'm going to save it just so you guys see it. And now I have this ridiculous route that lives on my phone and on my iPad and everywhere, right? <laughs> and some fool's going to come down here looking for a good ride and do it. I found it depends on how old your phone is, right? If it's a yes. new, my, my wife can go twice as long as I can. So we're always riding with both phones loaded up in case we have a problem. But is it like two hours, six? Yeah, on my phone, it's probably three hours because I leave the screen on the whole time. And, and keep in mind, there are a lot of settings you can set. You can set whether you want your screen all the time. But I just do, especially since I always ride with this. I want the screen on. I want it bright. I don't care. Every, at the end of every ride, I just come home and, and plug this back in. I got a charging station where I drop my bike. But yeah, now her phone, when it was at least new, we, we probably could get all day, all day yeah. with the screen on. And you can turn the screen off if you want, and it'll still pop up and give you the cues, but I just like to look at it. Okay, questions. That is the fundamentals. Let me make sure I didn't leave anything off. We've talked about metrics. Oh, did I show you there's an elevation curve? Uh, so let's go navigate this thing again. Down at the bottom, I've shown you metrics. Here's elevation. And I, I'll use this a lot. If we're getting really tired and I want to know what, you know, I want to see the big one before it gets here. I don't know why I want to know, but sometimes I want to know. Uh, or if you want the cue sheet, it'll give you the whole cue sheet. And then here under tools, and this is important for you all to see. I don't know why I'm turning this around when you've got a giant one there. I could go into route planner, right, if I'm crazy enough and do a whole route on my phone. I hope I never have to do that. I do do it on my iPad. Um, it's tougher without a mouse. Uh, I could share the route. I could stop navigation. I'll do that um, if we are ready to go to lunch, right? And, I, and I don't, if I don't hit stop navigation, it'll keep telling me off course, off course, off course. So I'll hit stop navigation. It's still recording because we want to record all our miles, but um, it will um, stop it. And then I just start it again when I get back to the course or if I route back. But settings is, is really important. There's just tons of them here. I like auto pause. I don't want it to record when I'm not moving. Um, navigation is good. Uh, I want the advanced cue warnings. I want eminent cues, visual. I like a lot of that stuff. I don't want the tones. I don't want it going beep and then telling me there's what it's going to tell me. Just tell me. I don't need a beep. I want spoken alerts. I want off course alerts. So I use almost all of that stuff, right? Somebody asked about handlebar mode, keep screen on and lock orientation. We should play with that lock orientation for you. Yeah. Yeah. We should play with that. And the only other thing I wanted to show you was we do have all the maps here. This little button right there. I know you all can't see that on the screen, but it is. I'll show it to you. This little button right here is get you to your map options. 
And this is quite useful. Do I want to see directional arrows? You might. Do I want to see the distance markers? You notice I have that on by default. I like that. Do I want to see the POIs? Do I want to know that Jim's church social hall is where it is on the map? Yeah. Do I want the cues? I keep that turned off because it's speaking the cues to me. I don't want to clutter. To me, that borders on clutter. But you may feel differently about that. I want to see the scale. I want to see the surfaces. I definitely want to see my heat maps. I love them. And then here I'm writing with what they call normal map, which is really weird because it doesn't, I don't know that there's anything on the computer called normal. So uh, that might just mean Google. But here's ride with GPS. In Europe, I will ride with these OSM maps because uh, I want to see all that, that map data. But that's it. And I'm happy to take any questions as a group or individually. Well, they might call it Ride with GPS, but we're breaking in her new knee. We went out and did a five-mile hike the other day. Guess what we used? You did just put those parameters. Yeah. No, oh, no, I didn't find it. I actually created it. Oh. We, were going to, we wanted to go over to the Alfred Greenway, so I sat at home, and she actually said she wanted a two-mile walk, but I made a walk that turned into five miles, and <laughs> off we went. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, you can, route, you can do off-road stuff with this, no problem. It has all sorts of trails and stuff in it absolutely so I, right now i'll hit share and i can hit share and i can send this any way i want to anybody i want and they'll be able to do the free stuff with it they but if it's a ccc route they still won't get turn by turn directions unless they are a ccc member this is a member benefit these are super easy to share so this morning's route I just uh, texted it to my wife, and we got to the start, and she hits text. She clicks on the link in the text, and it opens in Ride with GPS. Any other questions as a group? Thank you, ladies, for putting this together, and thank you to Lee. Tell Jane I ended promptly at 7.30 and covered everything.